My name is Diana Uge Forsatz and I teach at the Department of Environmental Sciences and Policy and I've been here faculty member for who many years, over well over 10 years. I'm also the director of the Center for Climate Change and Sustainable Energy Policy where uh, we are looking at uh, the challenges of uh, climate change, mainly climate change mitigation as well as how to design energy policies to bring the world to be more sustainable. Our recent most important research finding that I believe is truly globally significant is that we started to understand that the present policy discourse around climate change, which is about how to find the cheapest solutions uh, to deliver the most climate change mitigation. So how can we basically, how can we get the most emission reductions for our buck? Th that this is not necessarily the right question to ask. What we have been showing is the so-called lock-in effect, is that if we constantly cherry-pick only, we only harvest the low-hanging fruit, we are actually missing the high-hanging fruit, and when, it, when we need to cut emissions by 50-80% later on, um, in the century, we will not be able to go back anymore for the high-hanging fruit because either you tackle that tree in a hole or um, it will be extremely expensive to go back for the high-hanging fruit which otherwise together as getting it as a whole tree would not have been too expensive. Now this uh, research finding uh, and this our emphasis, new emphasis and new light on the so-called Lockheed effect has generated a lot of uh, policy attention recently from the very highest levels so far from Europe, but it is spreading now further too. Uh, for example, uh, at a recent uh, event at, by the European Commission where uh, the EU's future energy policy was discussed, this was a very, perhaps the highest level uh, event, stakeholder uh, uh, event. There I was invited only as one of three um, people talking about uh, efficiency, exactly to, to discuss the importance of the lock-in effect and, and to highlight that the problem is that the present policies, which we actually think, which we do under the banner of climate change mitigation and which we think are going to solve the climate problem, in fact not only are not going to solve it, but in fact are preventing us from later more ambitious action. Recently I also spoke uh, at uh, an event in London. This was uh, the opening of the World Building Week. Um, and the event was very interesting. Basically, it had only three speakers. Uh, the Mayor of London, uh, John Ashton, who is the Foreign Secretary, Special Representative on Climate Change in, uh, of the UK, and myself. And again, the reason why I was invited is to talk about the importance of the lock-in effect. Uh, because many governments are now realizing that in fact in the developed world the future emissions will be very much determined by our existing buildings, buildings in which we work and study and uh, party uh, now. Uh, so there, there's a lot of attention to retrofitting the buildings. However, we don't take advantage of the, of the recent know-how. We just retrofit these buildings to very suboptimal level. We save 20-30% of energy when we know that we can save 70, 80, perhaps even 90% uh, of the energy. So basically these two very high level uh, climate and energy uh, related decision makers were actually questioned after my talk, what are they doing in the UK to prevent the lock-in effect and uh, to solve this problem?